on. So guys, thank you so much indeed for those who joined me yesterday. We had a really fantastic uh, introductory session on Bordeaux. Uh, but today we kick off with the first producer led session uh, of Bordeaux, which is probably the most important of our wines to talk about when we talk about Bordeaux, because it is our only by the glass uh, Bordeaux wine um, on the core wine list at Hotel de Van. So we are joined uh, for the 21st of, of uh, May, which is the 13th session within May, May Wine Month 2024. Um, and we are joined by Antoine from Chateau Pen. So I'm going to hand over to Antoine and allow him to uh, talk through his presentation with you. So thank you so much indeed, uh, sir. And I'll let you hand over. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm trying to share my screen. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. That's great. It's just coming up there. Okay. Yep. We're perfect. Good to go. Yeah. Thanks, mate. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm super happy to be there with you this afternoon. It's a good opportunity for me to get out of my cellar and talk a bit about our wines. It's always good to share and not on, only do the, the wines. Um, moving on to the next slide, if it's working. Yeah. Just to give you a high level overview, um, I'm sure Richard uh, introduced Bordeaux and you all know like the, the big, you know, the big areas in Bordeaux. So you have the city that you can see on the on the bottom left. And then you have two rivers that are really shaping Bordeaux, uh, the Garonne that is southwest and the Dordogne. And so this is the border of the left bank, the right bank, and in between those two rivers. We have what we call entre de mer, which means between two seas, uh, so between the two rivers. So today, um, us, we have uh, plots in Genissac, which is in entre de mer, and in saint emilion which is, you know, Genissac is actually facing saint emilion You can find some similar soils um, in those two, uh, two um, regions. We're going to focus on Genissac today because the wine that you're serving is made in Genissac. A broad overview of the geology of Bordeaux. As you can see, it's too complex to jump into detail, and I don't want to jump into detail, but you have some region in France where the geology is a bit simpler than Bordeaux. It's quite homogeneous. Like you talk about Burgundy, it's almost everywhere clay and limestone. So it's easy with you know, a big difference in terms of um, um, how many rocks you can have in the soil. And so that's why they talk a lot about the slopes and so on, because it does have a big impact on the wine. For us, as you can see, the geology, this is the geology of just Entre de Mer, um, is super complex. It's mainly uh, linked to the tertiary and quaternary period. So in the tertiary period, Bordeaux was under the sea, so it leads to a lot of limestone soil. And in the quaternary period, you had the Pyrenees, so the mountain that, that raised, um, and, and, and you have um, a combination of tropical period and ice age that leads to river. The river carried the rocks, and so you have some gravel soil. So you can see there is a huge diversity and a huge complexity uh, in Entre de Mer. So you cannot see that there is one type of Entre de Mer. There are many different types of Bordeaux. And actually, if you even zoom in on our village, so this is just our village, the one that we talked before, Genista. So it's from north to south, there is roughly two kilometers. From west to east, there is roughly two kilometers. So it's not big. And you can see, you know, every color is a different type of soil. There are many soils just in this village. Uh, like moving 100 meters away, the soil is completely different. So for us, that's a big asset. That's a big asset because it's going to help us to create different wine. You will see in the border region, some people are really into blending. So they usually make like a first one and then a second wine. This is not our mindset. This is not our philosophy. We try to express the different terroir that we have. So that's why I have a broad range of wine. I have 10 wines. We're going to focus on one wine today and I will, and I will explain you where it's made. Um, but our philosophy is, is more to be um, true to the terroir and to express the different story that we have uh, because it leads to really different wine. So we have like four main areas on our, on our estate. Um, the bottom of the village, which is the north part that you can see on top um, of, the, of the picture of the map. 
Um, it's either clay and silt or then, uh, which is like bottom and, and, and center of the village, it's gravel and sand and gravel and clay. And then when you move to the top of the village, which is the southern part of the village, it's clay and limestone. But you can see how, click, how quickly the, the, the soil change. And at the bottom of the, when, at the middle of the village where it's gravel and clay, that's the same soil that you can find in Pomol. And at the top with clay and limestone, that's soil that you can find in saint -Emilion. So You can see that on both sides of the river, you can find similar soil. The main difference between the Grand Cruz and, 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 and the Entre de Mer is the fact that the good soil, the good terroir are much more concentrated in the, in the Great Appellation, but you can find great soil really um, in, in Entre de Mer, but it's so diverse that sometimes it's just a square, which is 100 meters, just one hectare. Um, so that's why, you know, uh, a part of our job is to look at this map to be more detailed and to try to buy the new, new, new plots with great soils to make sure that we have great terroir in an instant in an engine sack. So I jump into the geology. I want to step back and, and just present ourselves. Um, we are family estate. Um, uh, so we've been a family estate since 1855. I've you know all document um, you know from when we buy the first plot and so on. And from from then it's been going on from one generation to the next. Um, and so you have picture like in, in the middle of the, the slide, you have picture of my father, which is not the big guy, is the small guy that is uh, riding the horse and my grandfather. And I could show you picture of my grand -grand grandfather and so on and so forth. So it's been going on from one generation to the next. Um, and our goal is to pass it to the next generation. And I've been, you know, I was born in the vines. You can see the picture on the top right. Uh, Two of the small guys that are planting the vine are actually my brother and I. So we were born uh, in the vines. We belong to those villages. Uh, we've been working in those vines for forever. I don't. I cannot remember a vacation when I didn't work in the vines. So we know them, but it's, that's that's super important for us. We're the sixth generation, and our goal is to pass it to the next generation, and does shape the way we think about, about our vineyard practices and our winemaking uh, practices. Because, you know, what we're going to pass to the next generation is not a it's not a company. I mean, it's not numbers. It's not a p &L, It's not a balance sheet. It's not profit. Um, because that doesn't last. I mean, that can be true today. That won't necessarily be true tomorrow. Um, we all know that some region are more fashionable at some point than, than other, and and it and it moves. So we don't want to pass numbers uh, to the next generation. What we're gonna pass to the next generation? What is the real asset of um, of the company? Is the soil the vines and the landscapes. So what we're focusing on is to have healthy and lively soils, um, preserved landscape and healthy and old vines. And that's, if we, if we do that, then we're gonna pass a great, um, um, a great estate to the, to the next generation. And I mean, we, I will talk about it, but it does influence a lot the way we think about what we do. And the second thing that I want to mention in our philosophy is the way we think on winemaking. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that is going to stay and tell you that the more wine is complex, the better it is. Because I don't think that's, that's, that's true. Um, we think about the wine a bit like music. Um, a great music can be a complex, uh, hyper intense uh, music, like, uh, like a symphony with many instruments. It can also be a simple melody with one instrument. Um, and what distinguishes a great music from a uh, so so music for us is harmony and balance. And for the wine, it's exactly the same. What makes a great wine is harmony and balance. And so that's why we are distinguishing and creating 10 cuvées, um, because we feel that to find the harmony um, it's easier for us to express history, its terroir, and find the harmony um, um, in, in each terroir. Um, zooming in on what we do to preserve our landscape, to have lively soil and, um, and, uh, and old vines. So for instance, uh, regarding the soil, instead of uh, using a lot of fertilizer on the soil, 
we plant cover crops. Um, so I, you know, I show you the the, the full uh, circle of uh, of the cover crops, so from the seed to to what happened in the vines. But what it does is we try to identify what are the needs of the soil, and then we adapt to what we uh, the the kind of seeds we put um, on the soil. So if it needs more nitrogen, more more energy, I will put more leguminous. So it can be clover, or it can be I don't know the the English name, but many different plants. Um, if we need more structure, more carbon, we will put some cereals. If if you need to decompact the soil. We will use some cruciferous like like the radish, and so really each year we plant cover crops on our soils, and then we adapt uh, what we plant to what are the needs of the soil, and it prevents us from using a lot of fertilizer. Plus, we don't plow the soil. You know, you will you will see a lot of people that are telling you that they are organic, that uh, they have lively soil, and if you walk into the vines, you will see uh, soils that are plow. Um, you kill all the worms, you kill all the fungus when you plow the soil. So we don't do that. If you walk into our vines, you will see um, cover crops, you will see grass, you will see, you know, something that is protecting the soil, keeping the freshness, but also protecting the, the life and the biodiversity inside the soil. Every year, we replant trees to preserve our, our landscape. I don't believe uh, in an ecosystem where you see a sea of vines, why you see only vines, 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 vines. For me, it's like when you're taking the subway, you know, if you're like packed in a subway, if one people is sick, then everybody is sick. And um, so I, you know, for us, it's the same. We need to have vines that are in good shape and we need to have biodiversity, um, you know, you in know, our, in, our, in our plots. So every year we are replanting trees around our plot, many different trees, only local species, to make sure that there is enough biodiversity and in our plot. And it's not the case everywhere. So we're working with experts to figure out what are the, 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 the trees that we should plant. Uh, and we've not, we're not there yet on all the plots, but we are working toward having more diversity, to have more birds, more insects, and food and shelter for them all year long. Um, what else do we do? We do gentle pruning to make sure that you know we avoid big rounds. On the on the plant to make sure we have you know vines that are living longer. When we pull off a plant uh, before replanting, we wait so we let the soil rest. So I could give you many examples of what we are doing to make sure that um, we are putting everything that we can to have good soil, good vines, good landscape for the next generation. I'm sure you know a lot of things about terroir, and you know that terroir is not only the soil. Terroir is the combination of climate, soil, topography, vines, and a bit the winemaker. Um, I want to explain you a bit the, the wine that you're selling, so the, the tradition, through the lens of the terroir. Um, and so I want to pinpoint uh, the, 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 the attributes the, that I feel are important for this wine. You all know the climate of Bordeaux. It's an oceanic climate, so it's wet during spring. And um, you don't have extreme temperature, not a lot of frost during the winter, not a lot of extreme heat during the summer. That's an oceanic climate. We all have the same in Bordeaux. Obviously, there are differences, um, uh, small differences, microclimate, but, but overall climate is like this. Um, now we're going to jump into the soil. So the soil of the tradition wine that you're selling, it's gravel and sand. So it's quite a soil that is quite dry. And when a soil is dry with not too many nutrients, because it's very dry and, and, and on sand, you don't see a lot of plant growing naturally. It's not easy to, um, to have a plant grow on, a, on, the, on the sand because there are not many nutrients. This leads to more concentration in your grape. So you know the, the grape is going to create more tannin because it's a stress um, uh, reaction. And so it leads to more concentrated wines. So when you when you're planting a vine on, on on gravel and sand, you will you will have wines with more body. So that's one thing that we need to think about this wine. It's a gravel and sand um a gravel and sand soil, and so you can expect a bit more body in, in those type of wine. But the thing is, if I move to the next. Um, those are young vines. And that's the main thing that we think when we think about this wine. It's 
mainly Merlot, so 90% Merlot roughly, and a bit of uh, Oca Franc. It's planted on, on, on Gravesac, which is the woodstock uh, that is really good for those kind of soil, but it's young vines. And what you can expect from young vines is fruitiness, but you also can expect that because they are young, it's not easy for them to handle a lot of tannin to make sure that the tannin are ripe at the end of the year. Um, and so we have those combinations that is not easy. And that's why I'm going to talk about it. We're going to adapt our winemaking techniques because uh, we want to extract and we want to have the fruitiness from the young vines, but we want to avoid having some dryness because we know that the young vines are not really able to, to handle uh, properly this powerful soil, this soil that is quite quite dry and leading so to, to tanning. Uh, so, you know, when we think about terroir, we know that we have to adapt if we want to, if we want to have a, a balanced wine. And there is also one thing that I, that I want to mention, you know, talk about slopes, I don't want to talk about orientation, that's less relevant in Bordeaux, it's quite relevant in, in Burgundy, for instance, because they have less sun, um, and so the, the ripeness of the grape will really also depend a lot on the, on the orientation of the vines, and, and on the slope, it's less the case in Bordeaux, where we have enough sun and sunshine hours, um, but the landscape has an impact on the, on, the, on, the, on the wine, and you see more and more studies um, where um, the environment is impacting um is impacting the taste of the wine and 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 for me um for this wine we selected the you know the same terroir that are gravel and and sand but it's also the plot where my grandfather planted some big big trees and and sometimes there is not a lot of big trees surrounding the plot you can see the you know the bottom picture the picture on the bottom left you see a few really big uh, trees uh, around this plot. That's one of the plots that you were, we are using. But if you see, it's not easy to see on the picture because you, you, you have to zoom in. And um, it's creating a lot of shade. Those big trees are creating you know, a lot of shade on the, um, on the plot. And so it's bringing more freshness. It's preventing this hot soil, this dry soil to be too dry. And so it does have an impact on the, um, on the, on the wine at the, at the end of the day. And also those three, um, I don't know if you heard about it, but there are some fungus that are creating link between the tree and the vine. And it, it, it's helping those fungus, helping the, the tree and the vine to share some resources. They are sharing some carbon. They are sharing some... Uh, some water and they are sharing some nutrients, especially phosphorus. So those three are gonna keep a bit of water uh, when there is too much water, but they are also gonna share some water with the vine at some point, which is useful uh, because the tree uh, have deeper roots. So um, they go super deep to take the, the water and they can give a bit exchange. It's not a, it's not a gift, it's more an exchange, but exchange with the vine some, some water. Um, so when the summer is quite dry, which happens sometime in Bordeaux, uh, especially on those kind of soil, um, the, the vine will be a bit stressed. And the fact that there are three, it's going to help to bring a bit more water and bring some freshness and avoid cook aromas. So those combination of young vines and, um, and, and dry soil, what do we do to avoid you know, cooked aromas, to avoid dryness in the mouth? First, as I said before, we don't plow the soil. We mulch our cover crops. So it creates a mulch that is keeping some freshness and, 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 and prevent the soil from, uh, from suffering from extreme heat. Uh, and it's going to keep the freshness in the, in the wine. Now, second, we don't leave pool. So we, we, we keep the grape in the shade to avoid having, having some burn, sunburn. And, and third, um, we try to harvest at the right maturity, so we're not in the you know in the race to, to for the latest harvest. We try really not too soon, but really not too far. And that's that's super important for us to avoid cooked aromas. It's a merlot on gravel and sand, so you cannot you cannot expect like super acidic red berry uh, aromas. It, it will be more on the dark berries for sure. Because on, on gravel and sand, but we want to avoid having a really cooked aroma, jammy aroma, and so that's why we work on the um, on, on trying to harvest at, at the right maturity. In the winemaking, I talked about it, and um, how do we avoid um, 
harshness, astringency. How do we protect the freshness, the fruitiness? First, we do a low temp uh, uh, fermentation. So slow and low temperature fermentation to maximize the fruitiness, to let the time to the yeast to, um, to create the aroma. Second, we do gentle extraction. That's super important. If we extract a lot, we will get dryness because it's the young vines. I have the same wine on the same terroir with the old vines, um, and that there I can extract way more because because uh, the the old vines are able to really um, uh, handle that that uh, that uh, that tannin. It's not the case with the young vines, so we are more playing on a gentle extraction to have some body. It's not it's not a wine that is very thin. There is body, but it, because it's coming from from that kind of terroir. Um, but we really pay, pay attention to, to not getting too far. We are using concrete vats, uh, mainly like standard square vats and some, some eggs for edging. Um, we do long edging on, on those vats to, to, to let time to the wine uh, to rest and, and smoother the tannin. Um, we don't want to use barrel on this wine because our goal is to keep the fruit, fruitiness um, we don't want to add more tannin because when you're using oaks, you're adding a bit of tannin. Um, uh, and we feel that the oak will kill the, the fruitiness. So we, we go for the concrete bat. So high level takeaway um, on this wine, it's gravel and sand. So little water creating more power, creating somebody. Uh, it's young vines, so you will look for fruitiness more than power. And that's the combination of those two. So looking for balance between body and fruitiness. And that's 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 the way we think about, about this wine. Um, next thing, it's plots are surrounding by trees, so it leads to more freshness uh, It's in, uh, in the wine. And next thing is... We do everything we can um, to keep the freshness, keep the fruitiness, and avoid being uh, um, overripe. I'm going to talk about the wine. I'm going to pour some wine. For, sure. um, for us, it's our comfort wine. You know, there is comfort food. And for me, it's my comfort wine because it's the wine that you can uncork without overthinking about it. And it's easy to drink. It's fruity, dark fruit, it's round. Um, it can pair with many things. It's super, you know, high drinkability, easy, easy, easy to pair. Um, the perfect match for me is the Sunday Rust. And that's why also uh, I thought wine. And it's pairing very, very well with any Sunday Rust. Um, and you have that level of complexity, but not too much that, you know, you don't overthink about it. Um, and, and, and you don't have too much tannin. You have right, just the right amount uh, to, to pair it with the Sunday Rust. You can also pair it a slightly chill with a salad, um, but not a salad with a lot of tomatoes that, you know, are not easy to pair. Ideally, more, more like, like a Caesar salad where you have like, a sauce or something that is bringing some fat and um, to uh, to handle the tanning. That's the two kind of pairing that I see. But that's that's a wine that you also can drink by the glass without anything or will with a, a few cold cuts um, because you have you know not too much tanning and it's round round enough to make it meet a, a wine by the glass without anything. That's why you know it's quite versatile. You can pair it with many things, and that's why I call it my my comfort wine. Um, I don't know if you care, but you, we had good rating. I just mentioned uh, Robert Parker. We, it's it's ninety point. I just like the comment, which is pure and vibrant, uh, which is you know the kind of thing that we're looking for. It's right the the clear identity of the terroir, something that is quite pure. Um, and 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 again, we're not in the race for complexity. We're in the race for being true to the terroir um, and and having a clear identity. And uh, hopefully, that's what we what we do. And yeah, I didn't mention the label, but we put a tree on the label because those plots are surrounded by big trees that have been planted by my 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 grandfather, and and he, and he also shaped the identity of the wine. I think I have to stop because because uh, it's it's been around twenty minutes. 
and I can show you, you know, the the team or talk about the the, the vintages and how it was. But uh, but that's you know, I think you 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 got the the overall picture of this wine. That's absolutely and perfect. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Salut. Um, um, there may be some questions from people on the call, but I do have a couple of questions, Anton. Um, firstly, um, the obviously you talked about the use of concrete eggs as opposed to vats. What's what are you seeing the benefit of the eggs, and what do the eggs give the wine in terms of character that the vats don't? That's my first question. Yeah, so we use the eggs uh, on the white and on this wine uh, because it's helping to steer the leaves. First, it's smaller. So when it's smaller, the leaves are less compacted. And when the leaves are compacted, it's creating some reduction problem. It's, it's a bit technical, but, but, but it, it leads to more reduction. And the polysaccharides, uh, I mean, the thing that they are leading to more runness in the wine are less uh, well um, uh, developed in the wine when the leaves are packed. Um, so if you have a big vat that is super high, it's leading to more uh, you know, compaction issue in the leaves. So when you have something that is a bit round like this um, and, and smaller, it's leading to less compaction. And plus the fact that it's slightly round will help to naturally steer the leaves. It's partly true, partly marketing in the sense that it's not, you know, perfectly really uh, moving, but it's, it, it's true that it's a bit moving inside. Um, so it's helping to have less compaction in the leaves to lead more polysaccharides that are giving some roundness. So that's why we're using, we're using, uh, using eggs. Okay, fantastic. And my second question is what, you know, obviously um, we know it's predominantly Merlot, but small percentage of Cabernet Franc. What is the Cabernet Franc bringing to the blend that you know, has it complement the, the Merlot? of freshness. You know, just a touch of freshness. You know, yeah. I like the Merlot. Uh, I like the Merlot, but the risk, if you use only Merlot on those kind of soil, it can be a bit too jammy, you know. Uh, and the alcohol level, especially in Bordeaux, can be a bit too high. You know, it can, it can go to, to 15. And, and, and so what we want to bring, my Cabernet Franc usually are on 12. Um, uh, they, are, I mean, it's, they are mainly coming from a massal selection and that. You know, low alcohol, and they are bringing some freshness. So, what I want to, you know, using a bit of those will bring slightly more freshness to the wine, uh, slightly more acidity, and uh, and 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 avoid being too heavy. Um, I think you're mute, Richard. I cannot hear you. I don't know if sorry. The case for my apologies. Any other questions from anyone else on the call? Um, in which case, I mean, that's perfect for the half an hour mark and a really, really good introduction to what is a core uh, wine on our list. Uh, yeah, core Bordeaux for us because it is our only by the glass Bordeaux, as I said at the start of the call. Um, so just to, yeah, as we know, this week is a full on week. Yesterday was our introduction to Bordeaux. Today, Chateau Pen, and then we do have three more sessions, um, two from the left bank and one from Santa Maria. Uh, on the right bank later on this week. So hopefully uh, people can join us for um, the sessions later on this week. From everyone at Hotel Van, Antoine, just wanted to say uh, a big thank you for your time today. Um, and I'll end the recording there. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.